Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Sony Open from a uh, projection-based uh, perspective, slate-based perspective, and we're going to do, do we're going to be doing some lineup building. Excuse me, I've been away for a couple of days here. Um, and again, the reason for these videos, especially in this form, is not necessarily to show you what to do this week. It, it's really to show you a process that you can employ every week. Uh, to that point, I mean, these sheets that I have up here now are not finalized. We're gonna be doing many more updates on this, I believe. Um, but just again, to show you a process of how to analyze things. Now you'll notice that I don't have the DraftKings slate up, I don't have anything up here. All I have is my sheets. Um, and this is what you get when you're a true DFS premium subscriber is, is access to this, this grid. And you'll, you can download it. You can actually upload some of this information to actually all of this to SaberSim. If you use SaberSim, uh, it automatically updates to SaberSim if you have a SaberSim package on TrueDFS. But if you use other optimizers, um, you can use this sheet to download and up, upload your own, you know, your own projections. Um, we are going to pull up SaberSim to show how we're going to build here, but Let's just take a look at this and see what type of slate this looks like. So I have these guys rated by Sheets Value Score. Now, again, for those of you that are here for the first time this year's PGA or whatever, this is my formula, which combines both fantasy points and uh, points per dollar. Um, and these projections are taken from a lot of different industry sources and a lot of models, little tweaks here and there. And I am confident that this is the closest you're gonna get to a good fantasy point median projection. Uh, I think this is the closest you're gonna get to a the best ownership projection. And it's just based on a lot of back testing that I can say that. And when you are building lineups, especially using an optimizer or a simulator or whatever, you need to be as accurate as you can, at least to start off with. Now, again, these are not perfect, but you start off with a good baseline and at least get you in a, in a good state. And when it comes to hand building, you know, it's good to eyeball, you know, <laughs> what the projected ownerships are. So if things are close between a couple of guys, you know that you can pivot pretty easily. Like, for example, I mean, I just, we're going to get into this, but you see one, two, three guys that are all around the same price, uh, Kucher, Putnam, and Rye. And they all have around the same value score, yet Rye projects 9% ownership, where Putnam 16. You know, so if you're hand building a lineup, you're gonna want to play Aaron Rye. I mean, you're not gonna get the, you know, as you're giving up one point in median projection, big deal. But you're getting half the ownership, which is a much bigger deal. Um, so anyway, the first thing that you'll note when you look at this is that the top rated guys from a uh, sheets value score perspective is not the 10K guys. Right? I would say that happens about 50% of the time, maybe 40% of the time, which leads me to believe this is a middling type of build, which is going to dominate, you know, it's going to dominate the approach. Um, and, and then the next thing you'll notice is that a $7,700 guy is rated number two. That would be Svensson at high ownership. And then Kucher, as I mentioned before, Putnam and Todd. So, so you can make very easy lineups, hand building, just using these sheets. Like you could just, I, I bet you that, you know, you, you could do this. So look at the top 10 guys, which lineups can fit all these dudes in. And you have a good lineup. And, and, and believe me, I've done this before. And I played exactly this way before in my big buy-ins, especially when the ownership is relatively tame. And, and I would say that on this particular slate, the, the ownership is relatively tame. I mean, you only have, you know, two guys projected at 20% or higher. I do think that someone is, has to emerge from this as higher than this. Um, that's just the way it is. But um, the slate is one where you don't have to be as big of a stickler for ownership. Um, but again, I, I, when I look at this, I see, okay, two guys under 10% in the top group. These are guys that probably are going to want to play, like Spawn, Rye, 
Jaeger, you know, whatever. Um, so that's the first thing I would do is, is try to just literally build a lineup, just, just using the top six or at least some combination of those and probably make one kind of pivot to like Aaron Rye or something like that because he's a little lower owned or Spawn as opposed to, say, Svensson. You know, uh, now Svensson, Svensson, unfortunately, has a really good projection. So this is, this is really up to you how much risk you want to take. Um, but the way I have these guys ranked, it makes it very, very easy to, to build by hand. Um, all right, so let's pull up Sabersim and see what we get when we're building 150. And that's, listen, this is one of the things I would love to do. I'd love to study how to build 150 and, and how to use the Sims to help build 150. And, and golf is a really good, it's a good sport to do this because um, there is a lot of variance, but I still think that the models are pretty, pretty solid. So let's, uh, first thing we want to do is let's upload the projections. Now, again, if you are a TrueDFS subscriber, this automatically uploads to Saberson for you. But I have to do this kind of by hand. Click unlisted players, exclude unlisted players. And so you'll see that the projections have been replaced by, by ours. So the first thing you want to do is just run it pure, like with nothing else. Um, uh, I, I use exactly the Saberson defaults, 150. We're going to build 5,000 lineups. Whatever their minimums are, they've done a lot of back testing to, you know, to figure out these are the default things. Now, if you want, you could put 150 max because we know we're building it there, but it's going to work out to be pretty much the same thing once we start tweaking all this. So let's just build. Uh, oops, not the, we're not going to do the uh, contest sims yet. So we're just going to build the 5,000 lineups. And and why am I building 5,000 lineups if I'm only playing 150? Is because it's building this pool that you can draw from once you make post build tweaks you know like if you don't want to get like 100 percent of a guy it's really easy to just say okay i only want 80 of them and it'll still list they'll still have a pool of 150 to give you um because you're picking from a pool of 5,000. Uh, where in other optimizers you might have to rerun the build right? um and the other thing again is the whole key to not the whole key but one important key to lineup construction is figuring out once you you know have your top five thousand lineups like how you want them ranked, you know, um, like our default setting here is it's rating the top five thousand by saber score, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But if you want to get your top you know one fifty based on what the top one fifty median projection lineups are, you can do that. If you want to get your top one fifty based on your 99th percentile uh, ranking, uh, you can do that. Um, if you want to have your top 150 base race by lowest ownership, you can do that. A lot of ways you can rank these things. That's why you have this pool of 5,000 to choose from. When you're playing GPPs, it's really not the greatest idea to just rank these guys by top projection because they're usually going to be really popular and a lot, you know, a lot of people are going to try to do that. Um, so, we start with this. Now, this is what's called rated by Golf Main. So just so we know, Golf Main, and we can eyeball into this, the formula is 0. 0.4 times the sum of my projections, so all the projections, um, plus the 0.99 percentile, plus 0.5 times the average adjusted ownership. So what this means, this is a pretty aggressive way of pricing lineups. It's not through the roof, uh, off the wall, but it's a really, really good set of lineups. And quite honestly, if you have a really good set of projections and a really good set of ownership projections as well, I think that you could just stop here and put your 150 in and be kind of decent. Now, if you want, you could screw around and you can just see what, what, you know, what it is. I mean, like right now you'd be getting 72% of Russell Henley and, if that's not comfortable for you, you can hit, you know, you, you can say, Oh, I just want 60 and then it'll re-rank them for you. Um, it'll give you the top 150 based on this golf main um, uh, metric, but now you'll only have 60% of Russell Henley, which is, which is fine. Um, the other thing you could do at this point, which I really haven't back tested, but it does make some sense at least is to mess around with this min uniques thing. And Jordan from Saberson gave me this idea, gave everybody this idea 
it's a way to you know not take enormous stands on a certain lineup construction um, or a certain player without getting too far um, afield <laughs> from from the optimals. So what he recommends, and again, I haven't really screwed around with this, is to increase your uniques to, how do I put this? Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Let's first go to min uniques two. You still see you can get 150. Let's go to min uniques three. Um, I don't know how many this, uh, this shows. Interesting. So let's try to get 150 again. I don't know what just happened. Min uniques three, still we can get 150. Min uniques four. So min uniques four, you can only get 100. So only you can only get to 100 of the top 5,000 lineups if you require that you have four unique golfers in each lineup. So you can't do that. So what I would probably do on my own is say, okay, let's do the, the next one. So min uniques three. But what, what Jordan recommends, um, and for reasons I can't really quantify, is that to even go one more. So you go instead of, you know, the, the minimum you can get to get your full 150 is three, you go one more to min uniques two. Uh, I don't have the answer. I haven't back tested it. And it's it's very difficult to tell um, in any case. So at this point, once again, you could stop and you can upload these to your to your lineups. And these are good lineups for what we tried to build, you know, for, for 150 max based on tournaments that have 10,000 10, to 50,000 uh, entrants. And this is really, really strong. Okay. And when you do that, you'd be getting 62% Henley, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I wouldn't make any changes if I were going to do this. I don't really have an opinion on golfers necessarily. I just kind of trust the models. However, um, what we did is we uploaded our contest files and it knows that we're playing 150 in this pitch and putt. And we're also playing one inch in the signature hole. So what we did was we right, you right click there Oh, actually, we already saved these. So we already saved the contest sim settings to this. Um, for example, let's just, I'll show you. Just to show you what, what, you, what you do here. You would right click it and add contest sims and you see it would fill in like all this information, like how many players are in the contest, how many entrants, rate to be in the contest. Um, percent paid to first, percent entries paid. And the reason why it's doing this is that it's going to predict what the field is going to play. So if we have an idea of what the field is going to play, then we can even do better with respect to ranking our lineups because we can then play off that leverage, so to speak. Um, now, the other thing you'll look at here is it's assuming that the field is going to play based on the Sabre Sim ownership. It is not being based on our ownership. That is one thing you have to be careful of when you use the contest sims. Uh, using SaberSim is that you are relying on their ownership projections. Now, are there ways there are ways to tweak that, and I will show you a way to do that in a second. But that is something that you have to keep in mind. And you know what? For the purpose of this video, we are going to do this. So we're going to save these settings. So then we go into this, uh, back into our builds. You'll see these options for these contests. Okay, so. Let's run these as is, and we hit run contest sim. So again, what we're doing now is it's comparing our 50,000 line or 5,000 lineups to the field of lineups that it claims or that it thinks that the uh, the field is going to play. And is what it's then going to do, it's going to re-rank the lineups based on that particular contest that you want to play. And I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to, how to view that. And this is actually something I haven't done before. Like this thing is, but I'll, I'll show you. I'm, I am going to tweak that that field that I mentioned before. I'm going to not presume that Sabre Sims ownerships are correct. And almost there. That's the one thing. It doesn't say how close it is to being finished. That's okay. We'll wait a minute. 
but what, I'll, I'll walk through what we're going to do. So instead of using the, the Saber Sim ownerships to create a field, we're going to actually create a field of our own. I'll show you how we're doing that. All right. So first of all, uh, we completed our, our contest sims. And now you'll see from this dropdown that these contests are here. So instead of ranking them by that old that uh, golf main, which we were doing before, now we're going to rate them by how they play in this particular, you know, tournament. And we sorted, just to show you again, by risk-adjusted ROI, which is probably the best way to do it. And now what it's doing is taking the top 150 of those 5,000, and we're rating them based on their projected risk-adjusted rate of return against the actual field of lineups that Saberson presumes is playing. So one thing you will notice is that it is a little bit different. Like you're not getting 63% uh, Russell Henley anymore. You know, now you're getting 40% ben Benny on. And the reason for that is because Henley's probably going to be really popular. And it's taking that into account. Now we got to mess with the min uniques again. Let's go min uniques three, min uniques four. Once again, same problem. So min uniques two. So at this point, like if you believe that the same or sim ownerships have done the best, that, that they're, that's the best way to go, then you could just fire these in. So like for now, that's what I'm going to do. Let's um, put these in the pitch and putt using the entry editor. And now we'll get back to this. Let's go to the signature hole and we'll do the top risk adjusted ROI in the signature hole. Uh, and that being a 555, it, just, it doesn't require as much off the boardness, so to speak. So uh, this is our top lineup. So let's put that in for now. All right. So, so I mentioned that I was going to try to create a different field of lineup. So when we build our contest sims, like it says here, pitch and putt. When we click on this arrow, it says field of lineups, and it says Saberson. Now you'll see here that what you could compare it to is build one. So what does that mean? What that means is that this build that we made, where we uh, um, where we ranked everything, like those 5,000 lineups, we built that 5,000 lineup set, and we originally rated them by golf main. We could compare those lineups to themselves. And that's like kind of weird, right? But, but that's what we could do. Like instead of saying – you know, the field is probably going to play the Sabersim, uh, you know, top Sabersim ownership lineups, whatever. Um, what you could do is is do a little better, use your own ownerships and compare it to your own. And that's a little bit weird, but, but that is something you could do. Like, for example, let me show you what that would look like. So let's save the settings again. And we're saving it to build one. Let's just see if there's any difference. When we run our contest sims, not against the Saber Sim ownership field of, of, of lineups, but against the 5,000 lineups that we ourselves created, given our projections and given our ownerships. And again, this could be kind of a, kind of a mind bend, you know, because you're like, okay, these are the lineups I like, and now this is why I don't want to play um, but okay, so let's see what this looks like. Pitch and putt, risk-adjusted ROI. And now it's like a little bit different, okay? Um, you're still getting the Russell Henley. Now you're getting Russell Henley actually at the top. Not as much Benny on. So it's not too much of a difference, but it is a little bit of a difference um, when we use our field. Now, here's the question you have to ask. Remember, the, the, the simulator and the contest simulator only does what you tell it to do, okay? If you tell it to compare it against a certain field of lineups, it's going to give you the top 150, all right, against that field. It's, it's, it's not a, it doesn't have any judgment. It's going to do what you tell it to do. So if you decide that you're going to use the Sabre Simone lineups, it's going to give you that, right? If, if you decide you compare it to the field of lineups, it's going to give it that. Here's another thing I want to try. So here's a question. Is it reasonable to pres presume that the um, that 
the field is going to play lineups. And I'll show you. Remember the original the original build was was this this style here. Like, is this a, a, a reasonable style? I don't know. Um, but let's try a different field of lineups just, just for fun. So let's go back into build settings. And instead of using this 150 max entrance or whatever, let's build it by, uh, I don't know, a little bit less sim diversity. Um, we'll build it by three max, you know, let's say pe people are building a little bit more conservatively, which I think people tend to do. Let's rebuild the lineups based on these. And let's just see if we then use that as a field of lineups. And then we compare again our set. how it flies. Now there's a problem here, isn't it, right? No, it's actually gonna be okay, so check this out. Now remember what we're doing here. I think it's gonna, is that gonna be build one? Right, so what I should have done is make this build two, right? Because what I'm gonna do is is again, now I'm building, now the 5,000 I'm choosing from is not really what I want to do, right? The 5,000 I'm choosing from now are based on settings that I would probably not play myself. Let's just see. Yes, that's what I should have done. I should have gone to build two to build the second set. So then I can go back to build one. And then when I run the contest sims, I could say, I could say, think, we'll see if we can do this. Go look at build two. Let's see. Sorry, this is taking a long time, but again, most of the reason I'm doing these videos are for my own benefit. So this is now build one. This is what this would look like. Okay. It's build one. Still rated by golf main, but that doesn't matter. It's still the same 5,000. So let's go to another build. Build two. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do our, line, our, our projections. Our ownerships. And now let's just see. Let's go back into the regular build settings, which are, uh, we'll go to 150 max build lineups. And what I'd love to be able to do after we do this, is contest sims are in here. Yep, the contest sims are still in here. But what I want to be able to do is change this. I want this to use build one as the field of lineup. So let's see if we can do that right now while it's waiting for this. Build, yes, you can. Excellent, okay. So we're gonna use build one as the field of lineups. We'll do the same thing here, why not? Uh, build one. Do I need to remind everybody where we're at? Okay, I, I'm going to. So we upload our projections. We uploaded our ownerships. We built now two things. We built a set of lineups that we think the field is going to make, okay, which is based on a little less aggress uh, aggression than we would. So we gave it three max entries. We're not going to give it like single max entry settings. We'll give it three max entries. And then what we're doing is now we're building our set of 5,000 lineups, okay, um, using the 150 max settings. We're writing them originally by golf main or whatever, but then what we're going to do is we're then going to compare these to that other field of lineups. And we'll see what the contest sims give us. All right, so 
We already saved these contest sims. Let's now run the contest sims. And then we'll see what the ownerships look like. Not to prove my point, not to prove my point. I mean, to make for a cool video, it'd be it'd be cool if they were completely different guys near the top of the list. But as I say, golf is usually pretty well projected. Um, it's pretty tight, so I don't think you're going to get that much of a difference. But again, this is process, and these are giving you ideas of what to do. And I'm not saying this is right, but this is one thing you can do. All right, so we did all this. Now let's see. We're going to re-rate these guys by. Again, pitch and putt, risk-adjusted ROI, and this is what we'd get. We'd be getting, what is this? 44% uh, Henley, then Hatton, Aberg, Kim, getting more rows. It's a little interesting. Right? So what's correct? What's the best way to do it? I don't know. This, 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 this field is still very young <laughs> with respect to how to apply contest sims properly. Um, I think that either this one, which is the best, we've given three options, right? We've used the Saber Sim owned field of lineups. We've used the, uh, you know, comparing them to ourselves. And then we're comparing them also to a, another, um, a, uh, another field of lineups. It's a little less aggressive. Um, but for now, we're going to stick with this one. But again, once we have to do, we have to go min uniques two, min uniques three, see where we run into problems. Yeah, min uniques four is the problem. So we go back to min uniques two. You have 40% Henley, et cetera, et cetera. Now we put these in. And then you hope you get lucky, right? I mean, like it's, it's, uh, but that's all you can do, right, is, is get yourself in a position to succeed. We've used the tools at our disposal. Right? We've used the tools at our disposal. We use the models at our disposal. And I think we've done probably the best that we can. Now, again, this presume that the slate would lock now, which it doesn't. But this is a process that I use and continue to tweak to build PGA lineups. And I hope that you guys enjoyed whatever input you have. Feel free to comment. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.